Hi, I'm Richard, and today we're going to be talking about building with in-app payments SDK using our React Native plugin. Before we get started, make sure that you have Xcode installed, Android Studio, and Node.js. You'll also want to follow the building projects with native code in the React Native Getting Started Guide, and check the description for links on where to find them. We're going to be focusing on getting things running in iOS, since it requires a few adjustments to the build steps in order to get it working. You can find the instructions for Android linked in the description, but it should only require changing a few options in your bundle.gradle file. OK, let's get into it. Here we're going to be taking a look at a scaffolded out using just React Native in it. And in here, we're going to just go ahead and run npm install. And we're going to save our React Native Square in-app payments plugin. We're going to let that go ahead and install. Don't worry if this takes a little while. Once we have that installed into our application, we can actually then link it using React. Now that we have that installed, we can go ahead and run React Native Link. And then that's actually going to link our React Native Square in-app payments uh, plugin. So now that we have that all taken care of, we can actually then go head over to the manual installation for adding the Square in-app payments SDK to our Xcode. I'm going to uh, provide a warning here. You want to make sure that you follow these instructions in detail, because missing a single part of these instructions will cause a lot of issues um, when you're actually going through the build phase. So the first step is we're going to go ahead and download and unzip the latest Square in-app payments SDK framework. So we can find that over here on the GitHub page. And we're going to go ahead and click on it. And that's going to let us download it. You're going to want to go ahead and unzip this. And we are then going to go over to Xcode. We're going to take a look at uh, some of these build phase uh, things that we want to adjust. So we'll go ahead and click on the main part of our Xcode project, and then go over to the General tab. And then we're going to make sure that we change our deployment target to being 11.0 or higher. Then we can adjust whether or not we want this to be iPhone, iPad, or universal application. Then we're going to want to make sure that we go down, and then we add in the embedded binaries. So you want to make sure that Square in-app payments SDK framework is added in there. Next, we want to then go into our build phase. We're going to go ahead and click the plus sign here and then add in a new run script phase. You want to make sure that when you add this run script that you have it dragged all the way down to the end of your build phase to make sure that you don't run into any build time issues. In here, you're going to want to just go ahead and copy this over from our guide that we find in the in-app payments. So you want to copy this here. And that will go into your run phase script. Next, we're going to want to go in and cl clean up some of our link binary, uh, link binary with libraries sections. Um, you want to make sure that the React Native uh, bundle is not here at the very bottom. So we'll go ahead and select that uh, if you see that there and remove it. We're going to click over here into our libraries. And then we can drag open up our React Native Square in-app payments Xcode project and then go and drag over our last bundles. Now that we have all of this going, we can then actually build our application. So after you run this build, you should be able to then see everything pop up in the emulator. So we're going to hop over to Xcode. And we're actually going to take a look at our application. So here, we're going to make sure that we import in our React Native Square in-app payments uh, plugin. And then we're going to add in a couple interfaces here from SQIP core and SQIP card entry. Uh, these two are actually very important. SQIP core is used for initializing the application. And the main focus we're going to be looking at here is doing our basic card entry flow. So we can scroll down here. And the first thing we're going to make sure that we add to our application is a lifecycle method for component will mount. This is a named component uh, lifecycle method that's offered to people who are creating React Native apps, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and in here, this will actually run when the application is uh, booting up. And so here, we want to make sure that we're actually initializing our application um, and our in-app payments SDK with SQIP core dot set square application ID. Here, we're going to actually pass in our application ID, which we can actually get from our developer portal. So we can just go back here, copy this over, and then we can paste that into our method. Uh, next, we're actually just going to be checking to make sure that we're on iOS, because in this particular example, we want to make sure that uh, we're actually building this for iOS. Um, and iOS is unique in that we actually set our card entry theme um, using this method. 
So for more details on what you can actually customize in this app, go see the links in the description and check out our documentation. Next, we want to add in a function into our application that's going to be asynchronous, and it's going to be on card nonce request success. This is to handle when we actually request a nonce in our application. Um, here, we uh, have a parameter for card details. Um, this is actually going to give us back the information that we need to send uh, to our backend when we complete the entire flow. So in this, we're going to just do a try catch block. Um, we're going to log out the card details um, just so we could actually see what they would look like. Um, but then we are actually going to add in our card complete entry method. Um, this actually takes in a, fu a function where you can actually run anything um, that you want to have happen after you've completed the card entry. Then we have our catch um, that's going to be able to help handle in case we run into any errors in the process so we can send them back to our user. Next, we'll want to add in a on card entry cancel function. Um, this is actually to handle anything that you want to change in your state in the event that something cancels. For now, we're just going to go ahead and skip that over. And then we're going to add in an on start card entry function. This is going to be our main function for actually initializing the card entry flow. The first thing that we want to create is a card entry config. Um, this allows us to specify whether or not we want to have a postal code. Um, and then we're actually going to have our main star card entry flow function. So we can see when we take a look at this function that we expect the card entry config as a first parameter, the card nonce request success as the second, and the on card entry cancel as the third parameter. So we'll go ahead and pass in our uh, entry config, our card nonce request success, and our entry cancel. So now that we actually created our function for starting the card entry flow, we can go ahead and actually start it. So down here, we can just add in a button. And then on press, we're going to pass in our on start card entry flow, which is actually going to start the entire process of the in-app payments SDK. So we can see that we already have this uh, running over here in our simulator. So we have the basic scaffolded app from a React Native app. And we've just added in a button here at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and click that button. And we see that the in-app payments SDK is launched. Now our user can actually pass in some credit card details. We'll just go ahead and uh, enter some test credit card number here. And we can then pass that through. We can see that we get some wonderful animations showing uh, what part of the card we should be grabbing info from. And then we're going to go ahead and click Pay. And that's it. Now we have our nonce. And let's send it over to the back end. So we haven't really taken a payment yet. We need our back end to handle whether or not to take a payment or save our card details. But we'll save that for another video. That's it for handling in-app payments with the React Native plugin. Check out the description for links to the Square Developer GitHub for our in-app payments SDK, our developer community where you can get help or ask questions about your implementation, and our documentation where you can find more details about the in-app payments SDK. Let us know what you think in the comments or send us a tweet at SquareDev. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.